The most important findings made by amateur astronomers. Sir Galileo Galilei was the first amateur astronomer and owner of the first amateur telescope. He found Jupiter's moon system by pointing his tiny instrument up towards the sky. Since technology has advanced, more amateur astronomers are using larger telescopes and more high-resolution survey data is being made available online. As a result, amateurs are now playing a significant role in the scientific community. We'll look at the most significant discoveries made by amateur astronomers over the years in this video. You might be able to identify some of them. The Soap Bubble Nebula is the first. Before 2008, no one realized that it was a planetary nebula, mostly because Crescent Nebula, a much bigger and brighter object, sits nearby. Dave Jurasevich, an astronomer, accidentally discovered the object while imaging the sky with his 160mm refractor at f 7.7 using a 6 nanometers hydrogen alpha filter. Following that, the Soap Bubble Nebula awed astronomers and astrophotographers around the globe, inspiring them to shoot it for their own collections. To make the discovery official, though, takes a lot of work if you are a novice astronomer. Dave called this revelation of blessing and a curse because of this. Dave searched through every known catalog, amateur photograph, discussion board, and even literary work for months to be sure the bubble hadn't already been found. His discovery was made official after numerous reports and emails with the IAU. Jurasevich's Soap Bubble Nebula was given the name Ju-1 in 2013, five years after it was first listed in the Strasbourg-based Global Reference Database for Astronomical Object Identification. The characteristics of both the Crescent Nebula and Soap Bubble Nebula may be seen in this image. The tiny item on the left side is the Soap Bubble. Along the plane of our Milky Way galaxy, these clouds of gas and dust are drifting in the direction of the soaring constellation Cygnus. Both developed during a star's terminal period of existence. The crescent, also known as NGC 6888, was formed by its large, luminous center star, which expelled its surrounding material in a powerful stellar wind. The star, which is nearing the conclusion of a brief life and is burning through fuel at an incredible rate, should terminate in a stunning supernova explosion. The Soap Bubble Nebula, on the other hand, is a planetary nebula and the last envelope of a lower mass, long-lived, sun-like star that will eventually become a gradually cooling white dwarf. The larger crescent nebula is around 25 light-years broad, despite the fact that both are about 5,000 light-years apart. The Soap Bubble Nebula is a planetary nebula, as stated. What does that mean, though? A planetary nebula is a particular kind of emission nebula made up of a brilliant, expanding disk of ionized gas that red giant stars late in their lives expel. They have nothing to do with planets, therefore calling them planetary nebula is a misnomer. The word comes from the spherical, planet-like shape of these nebulae that early telescopes allowed astronomers to observe. The English astronomer William Herschel may have used the term for the first time in the 1780s when he said that these nebulae looked like planets. The ancient phrase is still in use even if the new usage is different. Every planetary nebula forms near the conclusion of the existence of an intermediate mass star, which has a mass of between 1 and 8 solar masses. The Sun is anticipated to develop a planetary nebula at the end of its life cycle. Comparatively speaking to the somewhat longer phases of star evolution, these occurrences are quite brief, lasting perhaps a few tens of millennia. Comet Lovejoy was another significant discovery made by a layperson. Since we were able to see it best between November and December of that year, it was also referred to as the Great Comet of Christmas 2011. Although exceedingly difficult to view with the unaided eye due to its closeness to the Sun, Comet Lovejoy was a spectacular comet that peaked at magnitude minus 3 and made a stunning subject for astrophotographers. Comet Lovejoy was given that name in honor of its Australian discoverer Terry Lovejoy. Actually, this wasn't Terry's first time coming across a comet. 
Actually, it was the third one. The fact is, he never stopped. Over the years, he continued to go hunting and discover comets. He has discovered 17 comets as of right now. His most well-known discovery, Comet Lovejoy, was made with the aid of a CCD camera and a 7.9-inch schmidt cassegrain telescope. An observation campaign was carried out in the Southern Hemisphere in the days between the discovery and the transit to the perihelion to characterize Comet Lovejoy, which is of interest because it is larger than the other grazing comets typically discovered through the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory Space Telescope. The diameter was specifically estimated to be between 100 and 200 meters. As a result, it's possible that the comet did not make it through the transition to perihelion, during which it would have passed through the solar corona. On December 16th, the comet survived the encounter and passed through the solar system at a distance of around 140,000 miles. This implied that the core's dimensions are more than previously thought and that it might perhaps be 500m in diameter, a gigantic comet it was. It was nearly as brilliant as Venus when it was at its brightest, reaching a magnitude of minus four. It is the brightest grazing comet seen through Soho as a result. We have so far covered comets and nebulae. Do you understand what a Strombrand sphere is at this point? Although the definition is fairly complex, it is all we have. Radiation from hot, young stars ionizes the ISM in its vicinity. The spherical volume of this HII, H second, zone where the rate of ionizations balances the rate of recombinations is known as the Strombrand sphere. What if I told you that one of them was found by a novice astronomer? Would you accept my story? You should, given that it actually did happen. The French astrophotographer and amateur astronomer Lionel Molato is truly unique. He used optical photos and mid-infrared imagery from satellites to find 10 potential planetary nebulae. When taking pictures of the Necklace Nebula, another planetary nebula, he unintentionally found Mole 1, an extended nebula in Sagitta. After a 20-minute exposure with a filter, Lionel saw what he called a little ball of hydrogen alpha on his camera. Although astronomers must be cautious when excited, he was quite excited. It must be verified that it is not an artifact. Lionel photographed the area once more the next day because of this, and he once more noticed what appeared to be an unidentified deep sky object. When Mulatto inquired about the discovery with a planetary nebula specialist at the observatory of Strasbourg, the specialist responded positively. Its name was Mole One. The object is currently assumed to be a Strombrand sphere, which is ionist gas surrounding an extremely hot star, rather than a planetary nebula. The Rosette Nebula is an illustration of a well-known Strombrand sphere. Mole 4 and Mole 5 were also found in a similar manner. Mole 4 seems to be a star object in Lionel's stellar photos, however NOAO, National Optical Astronomy Observatory, images clearly show the object to be nebulous in nature. Both the pictures taken by Lionel and the pictures taken by the online survey show Mole 5 as a blue elliptical nebula. While the existence of Mole 5 as a genuine planetary nebula has been established, less is known about Mole 1 and Mole 4. Please buckle your seat belts, ladies and gentlemen. What Dan Peterson uncovered in 2012 will astound you. On September 10, 2012, he was essentially just relaxing while watching Jupiter. He abruptly witnessed what appeared to be a fuzzy object crashing onto the globe. The man believed he was dreaming. Maybe it was simply something he imagined. Dan queried other astronomers on a forum about the peculiar occurrence in the hopes that he wasn't the only one who had noticed it. He received a video in addition to a confirmation that someone else had watched it. This video was recorded by George Hall, a skilled photographer of Jupiter. The biggest gas giant in the solar system is one that he particularly adores photographing. He looked over his records from that evening when he had used a 12-inch telescope and a black and white camera to record it. George quickly rose to prominence among the scientific community. 
Many emails were sent to him asking for information on the image acquisitions, the timeliness of the timestamp, and a copy of the raw file for more in-depth analysis. The impact that was witnessed in 2012 was not the first to occur on another planet. The first comet to be spotted as it approached a planet was Shoemaker-Levy 9. In fact, it had never happened before that a comet was discovered in orbit around a planet and not the Sun. The comet was found on March 25, 1993, by the astronomers Eugene and Carolyn S. Shoemaker and David Levy, who were studying photographic plates of the area around Jupiter. The comet, which Jupiter had captured between the second half of the 1960s and the early 1970s, had broken up into 21 smaller pieces due to the interactions between the gas giant and the comet. Did you know that Jupiter has been referred to as the solar system's vacuum? This is due to the fact that its gravity traps asteroids and comets, shielding us from them. However, Jupiter's gravity can also push an object onto an orbital collision course with Earth, so it's not all good. Fortunately, nothing horrible has occurred so yet. Not to be forgotten is the incredible finding of the giant squid nebula. In honor of its discoverer, Nicholas Outers, it is also known as O4. Nicholas found four nebulae, with O4 being by far the most magnificent. To test out his new astronomical filter for the first time, Nicholas intended to shoot images of the Flying Bat Nebula. Following several nights of exposures, Nicholas discovered that a sizable hazy cloud was only visible in his OII photos. Agnes Acker, a planetary nebula expert at the Strasbourg Observatory, received an email from him. According to him, the shape resembled the bipolar planetary nebula and was only discernible in O3, neither hydrogen alpha A nor SII showed any sign of it. Agnes endorsed his finding. Since the discovery, numerous amateur astronomers from over the globe have imaged the region using O3 filters to capture the stunning O4. This amazing photo of the giant squid nebula. Due to its difficulty in study, we don't know a lot about it. It has proven challenging to identify the Squid Nebula's actual size and makeup. According to a new analysis, O4 is actually 2,300 light years from our solar system. If so, O4 would be a stunning outflow caused by HR 8119, a triple system of hot, massive stars visible close to the nebula center, and the truly giant Squid Nebula would actually measure close to 50 light years in size. Here's where the video ends. Thank you everybody for watching. Which amateur discovery is your favorite? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.